Welcome, beautiful Earthling. If you are here, you are looking for a guide to assist you with developing a project in which you allow your users to finely tune the color theme of your application, software, or website. In this episode of the series, we will show how to save the user theme color choice as a cookie. In technical terms, what we are doing is creating persisting data across sessions giving your application a data storage mechanism outside of itself, but yet tied to it. We will give the user controls in order to save their color theme, and the color will automatically load for them in any of their future or subsequent visits to your application or website. Before dabbling in the code, we will take a look at the finished product so that you can determine whether or not you want to learn this sort of programming. So let's say the user comes to your application or website and they want to change your theme to a deep red. Maybe that's a little dark. And then they want to save that color. Then the application says your color choice has been saved as blah, 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 values. OK. Then if the user refreshes, it doesn't reset to the gray. And if the user closes their browser and comes back two days later, it opens as the exact color, saturation, and brightness that they chose when they last saved color. And this data will persist as long as they don't clear out cookies for your website or application in their browser software. The first thing we're going to do is start off with the code from episode one in this playlist, which was color adjust theming for websites or applications. So we had our index.html, which had the controls in it. And then we had a color adjust.js, which had our color adjust function and color reset function. Now in the example.html file, here we have the button for save color, which we had originally in that tutorial. And we had the button for color reset, which had a function already set in it. So we'll have the button for save color activated now with an on click event, which executes the save color function. And as we mentioned in the first video, you can set your event handling instead of here in the HTML for the on click event. You can set your click events in an exter external JavaScript file or in the head element of the file you're working in. It doesn't have to be down here in the HTML. If you want to keep your HTML clean, you can set event handling in your JavaScript instead, which is recommended for keeping your HTML clean. And we have an example of event handling right here that's going to be in the head element. We open a script tag and we close the script tag. And inside we have window add event listener for the load event of the document. And this is here so that your application can check to see that if the local storage dot theme color cookie is set, then we're going to take that local storage dot theme color data and do the same thing that we did in the color adjust function where we set the document.body.background color to this HSL color. So in the load event of the document, if the local storage dot theme color is present, then we're going to change the style, the background color of the application to that same HSL setting. Now ideally you would want to have this sort of code in your site-wide or application-wide JavaScript file. That way you don't have to have it in every single document because it would be redundant to have this code in every single document of your website or application unless your application is just one file. But you might have 10, 50, or 100 different documents and you don't want to have this code in a hundred different documents or even five or ten different documents. You would want to have this in an external .js file that you call in the same way we're calling in coloradjust.js. So maybe you would have a site-wide.js for all of your common JavaScript that gets loaded into every document. So now inside of coloradjust.js all we have to do is create the save color function. We'll go in there and right under color reset function we're going to pop in save color function. Now what I did is I just pretty much 
copied the code up here because we're going to need to get those values. And again, creating the HSL variable. And then we're using the local storage dot set item method to create the persisting data. It's basically a cookie with the name value pair. And the name is theme color for the data. And the value is this HSL variable right here. And then I just ran an if condition that says if local storage dot theme color cookie has been set then we're going to alert to the user your color choice has been saved as local storage dot theme color and they'll see the data values there but in your case for the developer's sake I wanted to show you the data in the alert but for your users you can just write your color choice has been saved period they don't need to see what the data looks like and another thing to note is that you don't have to save it with this degree string and the percentage symbol strings concatenated to the values. If you want you can just save the values and then split that string using the string split method in JavaScript to then create the mechanism here in your load event. Your window load event can break down this local storage dot theme color value of that cookie and then you can split the string and do whatever you want with the individual pieces of data for the H, the S, and the L, the hue, the saturation, and the lightness. But for the tutorial's sake, I thought I would just keep it simple and save the entire HSL value and its concatenation of degree string and the percent symbol string all in one line or all in one piece of data. That way it's easier to load in to the HSL color function. And alternatively, you can do something like this in your load event. You can make a variable named color, and make that equal to local storage dot get item theme color cookie. So this code is very similar to this code, local storage dot theme color. It just uses the get item method. So I'll just leave that there for you and comment it out. Okay, now we'll take a look to see if it works as intended. So I will set a color. I'll use that green, bring the saturation up a little bit and the lightness, and then save color. And it has the alert, your color choice has been saved as 126 degrees, 70% saturation, and 33% brightness. Okay. Now I should be able to close down the browser, or even if I refresh the browser, it keeps the green. It doesn't go back to the default gray. And I can even close the browser, and then come back two days later, reload the browser, go to the application, and it loads up the green by default. And another thing you can do in your application is set your sliders to this specific value and that would be done in your window.loadEvent handler. Here you would get the value from local color, and that's where you would have to save the data independent of its strings, the concatenated strings of degrees and percent symbols. You would have to save the data as a delimited piece of data, maybe delimited by commas, delimited by pipe marks or any characters that you want then you can split that string by those characters you can even split the string by spaces so your delimiter could be space between the H value the S value and the L value and then here in your load event you can get the local storage dot theme color and run the split method on that string to get the H, the S, and the L independently. And then here in your load event, use similar code as this, where we set the value of the sliders, the control knobs, to certain things. 
and you would just set those values to what the user has saved them as here. I hope that makes sense. I'm not going to be doing that for you, but it's very easy to do. So I think that's all there is to know about that. It's a very easy thing to do to save somebody's preferences or options in their local storage of their browser software. And you don't have to create a cookie for each little piece of data. You don't have to create an H cookie, an S cookie, and an L cookie. You don't have to have one for U, saturation, and lightness, all three. You can have the hue, saturation, and lightness all together in one piece of data and then either break it down by a delimiter in your string or do like I did here and save the whole color choice as a single string with the concatenated string data on the values. All right, so I hope some of you find that handy and I'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye.